Well, every definition of two sets of books, I mean, as you define it, but if you clearly look back at your meeting in 1221, you will see we came to you and we talked about the differences in what was in a spreadsheet that was presented to council and what was in the general ledger and what was also reported in the financial report. As you see it there, yes, of course I did. If you see my name there, I wrote the staff I report. You are repeating a term that I have not used, okay? So when people, when people talk about two sets of books, I can only go back and repeat what I've learned in my career when this has been said. And so basically what I did say, what I did say in that meeting, can I finish? Thank you. What I did say is that there was a separate spreadsheet used to depict to council what the fund balance of different funds was. That's a whole separate spreadsheet that the auditors never saw. And in the general ledger, those balances were not in the general ledger. And in my research and in my investigation and reconciliation, they were not in the CAFR, the, or let's say the new term is ACFR, was not in that report. And I presented a report to you guys. So basically, if you look at the report that we handed out to council from Gradient Solutions that did a detailed deep dive into what exactly was meant by that, what exactly what we found, then you will get your answer. The terminology you're asking me that I say, I never said that, but I'm explaining to you what it may mean to some people and what it can mean is that we did have documents that we were using for one purpose and another document for another purpose. Now, you can interpret that as you feel, but I'm not gonna choose to interpret for that term, I'm gonna tell you what I actually said is that there were two different documents that were displayed. One was presented to council as the balance in the books, which was not in the books, okay? That is what I'm using, that's what I'm sticking to, and so that, that is how I see it. So you can talk about the sets of books, but I can only surmise basically maybe that is what is meant by sets of books. Is a budgeted spreadsheet used as a set of books for the city of Duncanville? Today, spreadsheets are used that come right off of the database. Basically, I use the, the, a software called Cubes in Munis that pulls, that's a template that I pull and I tell it what numbers I want to pull and it pulls it directly from the database. There is no trying to keep up with what it is. It's coming directly out of the system. So I don't have to go back and hand code those numbers into the spreadsheet. It takes it from the database as it is updated with the data that is inputted on a daily basis. So the staff reports indicate that the budgeted spreadsheet did not agree with the books. That is correct. The fund balance did not agree with the books. Okay, so does then the phrase two sets of books, in your opinion, accurately describe what you are explaining? For me, describing it, there's two sets of documents, and this is the words I'm going to use. Books. The two sets of documents, Books. and you can call it what you want. Anybody can call it what they want. They can use their own terminology. I'm gonna call it documents. Documents can be whatever you want it to be, but as far as my standpoint, I'm telling you there were two sets of documents being used in this city. 
Not mm -hmm. one. Two, my question is, do you consider it your professional responsibility when you hear terms being misused to step in and say, oh no, that's, that's, not, that's not the meaning of that. That's not the way it was used. Do you consider that your professional responsibility? Sir, I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna go back to December 21st when you were given the document that stated what exactly what we wanted to say. And that's what I'm gonna stick to at this point in time. That's what I'm gonna take you back to. And when you look at that document, the, even the detailed document that was done by Gradient Solutions, who showed you specifically the differences, even in separate years, that the document that was being used for budget purpose that got shown to council, but was not shown to the auditors. I looked at Gradient's summary report and I looked at their 21 page PowerPoint they don't use the words two sets of books. Were they right or wrong? That is for you to determine. I am not gonna sit here and try to be an encyclopedia or dictionary to define books. All I'm gonna tell you is so that- So if I'm using the term incorrectly and you know better, you won't say anything. I am not going to get into a debate with you on that, sir, and respectfully, if you're going to continue in this line of question, I think it is best that we just do not go any further in that line of question. Well, I have a problem with that simply because I, I surmise that if you hear of terms being used incorrectly by the governing body or citizens and you know better, you don't say anything. I'm, I'm concerned about that because I would expect that a finance director has a fiduciary responsibility to advise, to warn, to say things that may be unpopular uh, with the hearers, but they need to be said. And sir, I did say that in December 21. I said it in my terminology, how I wanted to portray to you the words that I choose to use are the words that I wanted to portray to you in a manner that I felt like was professional. This is not a political game to me. I did not want to express anything political, but I did want to give you the picture of what was being done in the city. I didn't say it was political. I said that there is a concern. I'm trying to address the concern. So now, all of this came up December the 21st of 2021. So Gradient had um, recommended solutions to what they found. So did you implement those solutions and when were they implemented? Yes, sir, we did implement those solutions. And if you will look back in the audit committee meeting in December the 14th, I handed out a whole package of a plan of action of you guys asked me to come back and address the issues, some of the issues that were in the audit. And I addressed how we plan to go forward and, do, and fix the things that we felt like were not appropriate for governmental accounting. And one of those things is in the fund balance. We determined that on the day that Gradient Solution gave their presentation. We determined that we were not going to use spreadsheets in the organization that we couldn't verify that we would move forward with a new process where the all fund balances in the general ledger would be verified against that and not on a spreadsheet that is not tracked and kept on top of. So if I understand you correctly, the problem was resolved certainly shortly after it was briefed. We chose the path not to use the spreadsheets that were first being used in the first budget process in 21. We chose not to use that process. Again, as we stated to you in the meeting, in the audit committee meeting, as well as the council meeting, we shared that with you. Okay, and you agreed, you were okay with that. So I, do, I really don't know how else to put this 
other than this has been explicitly communicated to council and to the audit committee of what we found, what, our, what we propose as a solution going forward. We have explicitly said it to you, and if you look at the gradient solution report, the details are there. There's nothing really else to be said. I mean, you could, we could sit here and debate about words all day long, but basically that report that they issued basically told you what the issue, and we had a discussion in a council meeting regarding the fund balance and the report and what we found. Let me rephrase the question. Is that still a problem? Is, is the budgeted spreadsheets or whatever, I thought I heard you say, you all don't even do that anymore, so I'm assuming that's not a problem? No, that is, that we do not use those budgeted spreadsheets any longer. Okay, well, someone thinks it's still a problem, so I like to say you've gone on record as saying this is no longer a problem. I am saying that we no longer, as a financial services department, utilize spreadsheets with balances that are not from the system. Okay. Very good. And let me also add that I read in the gradient report that um, there wasn't any outreach or communication to the finance director or assistant finance director at that time. Can you repeat that, please? I read in the gradient report that they said that they uh, did not interview the previous finance director or the previous assistant finance director who made those spreadsheets. And uh, they also mentioned that um, if they had, then other information may have come to light that would have affected their opinion. Sir, I believe you misread that because what I read, and I have read it several times, is that they said that they did reach out through people in the organization. I reached out to the assistant finance director. Asked, uh, we did reach out to the also finance director through you miscategorize what I said. It says right here, the prior director of finance is unavailable to help relating to the resolution of the difference. There is not a significant amount of history or documents to rely on. The prior assistant director of finance has also left the city. But you fail to read in that is that we also did reach out. We were asked to reach out and they told us that the people that reached out to them were not successful and gaining any more insight into the spreadsheets. Basically, that wasn't said in I the reached report. out to the assistant finance director personally. I asked them to reach out to the director. In fact, there were, I asked two people to reach out to the director so that we could get some clarification on maybe I missed something, maybe there was something we misinterpreted, you know, because we're all not perfect. And so we did do that due diligence to reach out, and we were not successful. We did not get any answers that would help us with any insight into that. All I have is what is written, and it doesn't indicate that. And so, uh, any questions from the other members of the Finance Committee? Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ms. Cooper. Uh, so I, I do want to be clear. I just want to make sure I understand um, that, I mean, at this point, uh, is it, is it, are, are we beyond bringing back any of the former finance administration to DA? It seems like some of this will be clarified if, 
some of those individuals who are part of the previous finance administration were here to work with you and your staff and figure out uh, some of those issues. Uh, sir, we have done our due diligence. I've had discussions with uh, Ms. Tia Pettis. I've had lunch with her. I've asked her specific questions. Um, the budget was not one of her things that she was allowed to do, okay? And she specifically said that uh, her area of expertise was the actual audit. And you weren't successful in uh, reaching out to Mr. Summerland and having any discussion? No, sir, and even we asked people who knew him, who know him, to reach out because sometimes uh, former finance directors have an uh, issue with talking to other finance directors, especially it depends on the circumstances in which they left. Uh, I have worked in cities where I could reach out to a finance director and, and ask my questions. So it is very helpful when you need history and when you need um, a way to go forward. So that was my first um, w way to do it, uh, but I was not successful. So I tried other avenues and reaching out to other people to see if they knew them who were closer to him and that was not met with any success. Well, I, I appreciate you making the attempt. It's very unfortunate because it seems like a lot of this would be resolved and clarified if, if we could work together with them. That was uh, our hope. Yeah, so with Gradient Solutions, are they, uh, are they certified public accountants? Do they? Uh, they are certified as certified public accountants, but they do not work and as in their consultant basis, they are not auditors, okay? Not okay? Auditors, okay. But they do hold uh, licenses as certified public accountants. They have been auditors. Uh, their backgrounds are very, are very strong in audit and public accounting and working with internal controls and looking at issues, doing analysis at the detail levels as far as with spreadsheets, with um, purchases, P cards and that type of things. So I have used them in the past for various issues. When I came in, there were control issues in various other cities, in departments, and they were very helpful in coming, bringing suggestions and putting new processes in place that helped us do things more efficiently. Okay, I just wanted to, so I, I don't have the report in front of me, but I do remember um, one, on the first or second page, they had a very clear statement. We are not right. accountants, we, are not, we don't audit, we don't look at, Right. financials and it, it appeared to me that they look at uh, problems presented and they look at solutions exactly and so they they weren't uh, a firm that was hired to come in to find a problem that a problem was suggested or presented to them mm -hmm. and so they were looking at solutions or doing we like asked them to find a solution problem. yes right. that was our what we were trying to do is find a solution find something that maybe we missed um, that I was not able to find in my inquiry so that is why we call them in to get another set of eyes on the books to make sure that nothing was missed and we could get some answers. Okay, and I, I appreciate that because I was trying to understand did Gradient Solutions discover a problem and tell us, hey, you got a problem here that they were told that this yes. is a problem. Yes, I discovered the problem. I discovered my part of my job as a director uh, coming into any city is to look at all of the balances, the fund balances in every fund of the city. Because if you know of a city, they have a, a numerous amount of funds and the balances in those funds ha is very critical that they be on target. Uh, the auditors look at those balances um, and compare them as well. So that is part of, yes, my role to come in and look at those. Okay, and, and just one, one more uh, statement. A and you know, I wanted to make sure that we uh, explain the purpose of this commission, so if, if we go beyond the purview of this commission, uh, let me know. But I do remember uh, that, that meeting back in December, and I do remember uh, very clearly you know, explaining to us that there were some conflicting sets of documents. I do remember that, and I remember that it was a, a public meeting, and that was, it was an open, matter of fact, I believe it was, I don't know if it was one of those meetings was a briefing, but this was all yes. this was all public. This wasn't a closed session meeting where we were told something no. and then we decided what to do with it. This was just this was an open meeting. I remember that being explained to us, and the way that I walked away from that, and I 
feel like everybody in that room, because there were a lot of people in the room at the time, um, was that, okay, first of all, this isn't anything illegal that's happening, but there is a, a problem that needs to be resolved. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take away from that that there was something legal, I illegal taking place. And everybody else in that room, we, we went on to the next topic. And so um, this is why when other terminology was starting to be used uh, that was suggesting illegal activity, that uh, you know, I had to go back and watch that meeting and make sure that, that I missed something. And you know, I appreciate you bringing that back to our attention that that was presented. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, ask the, our auditors, Mr. Mr. Williams, during the, the time of your field work, did you come across anything like that, the, uh, the spreadsheets and the, what she's referring to? Uh, no. Um, there are spreadsheets that they use that are off-site, off the actual mainframe computer, the ERP system that's being used. That's a common practice for a lot of entities to utilize spreadsheets because you have the information that comes directly from, from the system, and Mr. then there's a way to manipulate Mr. Williams, it to be able to present it before. Mr. Williams, for just a moment. Uh, Mr. Williams, can you tell who you are and your awesome. background, please? All right. My name's uh, Marlon Williams. I'm the audit partner at McConnell Jones. Um, I've been kind of involved with this audit since in numerous stops along the way in the city since probably 1996 on and off, depending on which, where I was. And how many years have you been involved in our audit? Current, in this current stitch, mm -hmm. four years at, th three years at, 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 M at MJ, at McConnell Jones. Okay. And then at my former employer, I was 10 years. But you've been involved with the city of Duncanville's audit for with how long now? For at least 15 years, on and off, depending on where I was. Okay. On the street. This this last uh, this last term. session's for three years. Three years. Yes. Okay. So you have issued audit reports before for the city. Correct. Okay. How many times before? Before that, I was a signing partner on it five years before that, and then I started out of school. My, one of my first audits was the city of Duncanville. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. So it it's not unusual for entities to utilize spreadsheets. It's a common. I think a spreadsheet is a accountant's best friend, basically. It helps them present the information because the data that's included in the system is detail-oriented. You don't want to see every line item that comes out of the system. It becomes very difficult. Um, the term that's used, and I looked at the report, and I've known Calvin and WebWatch before they became Gradient for many, many years as well. Um, spreadsheets are useful, but they're dangerous. Some of the biggest problems that have ever happened in audit errors are because of a misformula and you make a decision based off of a misformula. So uh, one of the steps when we're presented spreadsheets is where did that information come from? So good due diligence when I come in, if I was a finance director coming into an organization, is I'm looking at what's being presented to the audit committee or to the board or to the council, depending on what type of organization it is, and ensure that information ties back to the system of record. The system of record right now is MUNIS. So MUNIS is really the big L and L. That's what we audit. Our job as external auditors is to ensure that the information that is there has support, and that support is what ends up on the ACFR at the end of the period. The budget process, I would say for 95% of the cities, is done in Excel and then ro rolled up into the, si into the system. So as an auditor, what we, do, what we end up looking at is that public document, which is kind of before the screen right now. The actual public budget is tied back into the ERP system. So all of those items are tied back in. When you talk about utility funds, which is what the, the, the area that seemed to have the biggest problem in this area. But before you leave, go, go there. Could I just, let me ask this question. Uh, back on your, on your tenure here at the city, under the current administration, the financial administration, how many years have you been the auditor to audit the work that Ms. Atmore has been? This is our second year. Second, second year. Third, second. Technically, it was like half. Yeah, sec okay. second year. That you were the in charge auditor, is that correct? Correct. Were you the in charge auditor for the previous administration? Yes. Did they use spreadsheets? Yes. Did you have any problem with the, them using spreadsheets to tie back? 
to the to the to the financial state to the general ledger. The the problems would happen occasionally when we look at Excel spreadsheets that were provided. They would not always tie back to the general ledger, and there'd be adjustments to the spreadsheets. That was common. But when you rendered your opinion on the financial statements, you were satisfied. Yeah, we render our opinion on the financial statement. Yes. Munis or ENCODE or whatever system they were using in, yes. in before. We don't render opinion on the spreadsheets. Right. I understand that. Yeah. But you use, they did use the spreadsheet to tie back to the, uh, to the financial statements, to, to the uh, general ledger. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you didn't have any problem? You had... There you had were a, occasional adjustments to the spreadsheets to ensure that they tied to, that, to, the, to the financial But in your opinion, you were satisfied that everything was... Fun fairly stated. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Williams, since you brought it up, um, is there one particular area that was a problem? And for what I heard was, was potentially that it was just like a utility fund. So, so the utility fund is always a problem when you deal with budgets because you have two forms. See, okay, I, mean, I don't know how specific to direct, so I'm going to try to kind of uh, explain the uniqueness of governmental accounting. All right, so the term that's used is that you have modified accounting and you have full accrual accounting. GASB 34 created this issue. So you in term have a cash basis, modified cash basis of accounting versus a full accrual. Utility funds are enterprise funds. As such, items that are considered for budget purposes, expenditures, are not considered that under GAAP. So as a result, you have one set of financial statements which is your ERP system. There's no way to tell the ERP system unless you create a bunch of dummy accounts within the system that you want to keep something tracked in the book base and under the full under the full accrual basis. The reason why you use the modified accrual basis is it tells you about your cash cash expenditures. So your budget balance in an Excel spreadsheet for budgetary purposes, normally, especially when you're talking about enterprise funds, doesn't necessarily agree to the full accrual basis. So there are going to be natural di differences. The biggest difference is because of fixed assets. Fixed assets is considered an expenditure, a cost. So let's try to break it down. Let's say I had a million dollars of fixed assets that were purchased in a fund, right? And that fund was, and I had a million dollars of revenues. In a governmental fund, mm -hmm. your net fund position, your fund balance in a governmental fund would be zero because those expenditures are all considered expenses, not beneficial to the organization. On a full accrual basis, your fund balance would be a million dollars because those expenditures get moved up to the balance sheet and you have assets reflected on your, on your financial statements. So you will always have a difference on a budgetary basis related to the utility funds or enterprise funds that is just natural because of the nature of the difference of the types of funds. And it's possible, again, I have not looked at the spreadsheets, but it's very possible that that could be causing some of the difference. I think it's good practice, and this is where we've gotten in our arguments with many, and it's the way that every entity wants to run their system. It's good practice, in my opinion, to have some sort of reconciliation that explains the difference in fund balance. But when you look at the financials and you look at what's on the budget book, because the budget book was created via those spreadsheets. It wasn't created via, and it's created via the spreadsheets and that information is uploaded into the system. So when you look at the budget, you can see that all of the revenues and expenses tie back to what's in the system, showing that the process to move it from the spreadsheets to the system is correct. The fund balance doesn't agree. And for our purposes, and for our purposes, we're just going the fund balance via what's in the system. So we don't really worry about what's, on this, what's in the Excel spreadsheets because it doesn't have an effect on our audit opinion because our audit opinion is based off of the GAP fund balance or GAP net position that's reflected in the financials. I hope that didn't get too wordy, but. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah. So, so Ms. Ms. Atmore, w was the issue largely in the utility fund? That was the fund Bas with, the, with the biggest difference. Um, but let me, let me tell you, for somebody who's been in this a long time and learning how to do cash basis, unrestricted fund balance, unreserved uh, fund balance, 
we know how to calculate with the assets in the fund. And this particular fund, utility fund, the assets, most of the assets had been moved out to the CIP fund. So when I looked at that, I have to look at all the fund balances, accounts that make up fund balance and then take out those that are not capital assets. And that's how in my spreadsheet, I calculated the fund balance. And that came back, tied back to his number in the ACFA that he had. It did tie back? It did tie back. Okay. Yes, it did. And, and stuff, so. And that spreadsheet is available and that is what Calvin Webb used when he was looking at the other spreadsheets. Okay, but nothing was material in the difference, right? It, it was, was a material difference. Yeah. Seven million dollars is, is a material difference. Uh, Seven point eight is sixteen million is versus sixteen is a material difference. I, I, okay, is that because of the difference of the way it was used, the cash versus a modified accrual? No, sir. That was strictly unrestricted fund balance. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Williams, back to you. Do you feel that since you wore the uh, auditor of record, do you feel that everything fell within generally accepted accounting principles? On the financial statements, it, it, again, the Excel spreadsheets aren't required to follow generally accepted accounting principles. It's best practices for them to do that. But a lot of times, many situations have occurred where those spreadsheets are not. One of the standards came as a byproduct of these reports that are sent to councils don't necessarily agree to what shows up on the audit. So the standards came in and said every journal entry that we, we make that causes some differences, we need to bring it to their attention that are material because you can be making decisions based off of spreadsheets that aren't the same items that shows up within the actual audit and that causes confusion. You know, Looking at Calvin's report, the biggest concern, again, is if you think you're in disposition of net assets and you're making decisions, you might have a fund balance policy, you might have a certain amount that you're supposed to maintain, and that doesn't reconcile back to what's on the act for, you could be making wrong decisions. Okay, so was the balance in the AFR correct? The balance in the AFR is correct. Okay. Because that's the one you, you give your opinion on. That's the one we give our opinion on. Okay. And, and generally, uh, the fund balance that they give their opinion on basically represents the starting point to build the budget for the upcoming year. Is that a correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so as I understand it, um, the Excel spreadsheet, which is a document, did not agree with the books, which is Munis and Gradient came in and looked at the problem, found issues with the spreadsheets, and basically, as I understand it, said, um, don't trash this spreadsheet, it's not reliable, and do another spreadsheet uh, that you can tie back to, but as you just stated a few moments ago, you all don't even do that anymore. So you, you've changed, you've moved away uh, from doing the spreadsheets and you work through Munis. Yes, we okay. do. All right. And as if you really want to know what was reported to you, there are clips from meetings where financial reports were presented to council that showed that utility fund balance at seven million. I have copies of those if you want to see those, but there are clips that were basically shown to you uh, by the former um, director regarding what the fund balance is in that fund, and it was seven million as reported, but at that same time, as I looked in the ledger in 21, it was 16. Mm -hmm. If you want to see those, I have those here with me so that you can view those. No, I, I, I definitely acknowledge the fact that uh, there was a difference between that document and the books. And, um, 
and gradient in their presentation uh, went through it and pinpointed uh, the errors in the Excel spreadsheet, that document, um, that were problematic. So, Mr. Chairman, excuse sir. me. And, and who prepared the spreadsheet that you're referring to? I mean, I don't, I don't know. The, who, who prepared the spreadsheet that you had a problem with? Um, it, was it was prepared by the former finance director, okay, and that was being used. It was being handed down year to year, and when I came into the organization, um, the budget administrator was utilizing that same document as was instructed. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so that that takes care of B. That, that B. Take care of B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're on A. Okay. And so um, at this time, I'd like for uh, Mr. Williams to talk about uh, uh, the current. Mr. Mr. Harvey, I'm I'm sorry. So I, I do want to make a comment. Okay. because I, I think it pretty clearly displays there wasn't two sets of books as was, was alleged. And I do want to make that comment. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Williams, um, tell us about the fiscal year 22 audit. Um, before you start, Mr. Williams, the, uh, the report that you're gonna give us now, this is the 22 audit, which What's the year in? Is what year? What's what's the year in? September 30, 20. September 30th. Okay, and uh, it has not been completed yet, or has it? It has not been completed yet. Okay, all right, go ahead. Okay, so um, when we engaged in Sonya engagement, other than our, our time frame that we anticipated completing the work, um, this is a tight labor market. So if we don't fall within the period that we're able to complete the work, our staff moves on. That's kind of the way it actually is because we have a set period of when the work can be done to make it official and efficient. Um, there were some newness issues that have been ongoing throughout the period and it makes no sense to be auditing and then the numbers change because munis is still being worked through. Until munis and all of the issues were sorted out, we weren't able to, in good earnest, put, put a great effort towards completing the audit. We spent some time on the audit, going through some of the controls, completing some of our planning documents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we're not able to get sufficiently, in my opinion, on the substantive file. Um, my last day at my current employer is supposed to be April 30th. So it causes a little bit of a difficulty associated with that. So, you know, um, I changed my schedule <laughs> in order to ensure that the follow-up partner that we get through the substantive period that's necessary before I leave and I changed my new hire, because I, I want this to be a success. This would be something that, you know, I, I don't think it's fair to put on to a, a new partner coming in. I think it's important to get this completed. Uh, are, you, are you saying that your, your time is almost up? My time, at McConnell, my time at McConnell Jones is up, yeah. I'm moving to another firm. Okay. All right. <laughs> were you aware of that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don, how about you? Were you aware of that? It's relatively I, recent. I was just recently yeah. made aware of that because it was a recent, it was a recent change. And I know he talked with Mr. Harvey and, and stated that. Okay. So now are you saying, let me summarize it real quick. Are you saying you could not complete the audit? We Do not. Correct. And to summarize that, what would be the reason why you could not complete the audit? The primary reason is cash. That's the the major issue over everything. Cash runs everything until cash is fully reconciled. We can't complete an audit. The cash account was not reconciled? The cash account was not reconciled to the general ledger. Has the cash account been out of balance for a while? It's been out of balance for a while. Mr. Chairman, can I address this to, uh, okay. Ms. Ms. Admore, could you uh, go to the mic, please? I noticed that you presented to us, even this evening, this financial, monthly financial report. Yes, sir. I flipped through the report. I saw the activity as of February 28th. Yes, 
Yes. I did not see a cash balance. Has the cash balance been reconciled through this period of time that you've given us these reports? The February of 22? Yes. No. Of this 23, is I'm sorry. 23. 23? No. No. We are in the process. Now, if you want more elaboration, let me just share this with you. As I said in the last Audit and Finance Committee, okay, uh, and I gave you a plan of action because in the 21 audit, we discovered some discrepancies in cash. We discovered they were manually reconciling cash. They were making uh, huge matches of adjustments to match to the could, bank statement. Could you clarify who they is? The prior um, staff on the team was reconciling manually. And that is what had been they had been doing for years. We have Munis. Munis ERP system is capable of doing bank reconciliations through the software. However, that was not implemented. They chose not to implement that. And because of that choice, uh, when we engaged Munis to say, can you get us back up and running so we can figure out how to make all of this reconcile and start 22 off in reconciliation, we spent massive amount of time in Munis cases, which I handed to you guys in that audit meeting in December and showed you the number of cases that we had. Uh, Ms. Atmore, I want to remind you that uh, Ms. Clark, Mr. Koontz, and I weren't part of that audit committee at that time. Yes, sir, you were. And, and, and uh, Mr. Harvey, I'd like you to tell me potentially who was part of that committee at that time. That, that time being December 2021? Yes, sir. Um, Which it was me and Mr. Talley and I believe Steve Rutherford, I think, yes. Uh, Mark Cooks. I think Joe also was on it too. Joe, Joe Veracruz. Yes. Yeah, he was sitting in the back with me. Okay. Okay, that's who was on the committee. So Thank if you, you remember, and, and maybe I need to refresh your memory, that we actually talked about that audit in cash in 22. We met several times in 22, including May 10th, August, September, and then in December. And in December, you had asked me to come back with a plan of action and how to address the issues that were in the 21 audit. And that's what I did. I prepared a document that I was not able to go all the way through that said here are the numerous issues that we're having with reconciling, with the audit issues, with internal controls, and all of the things we had in the audit. I gave you a document that had appendices, exhibits attached that gave you all the information and asked if you had any questions, okay? And that included, I didn't just say here are the problems, I said here's our way to address it. So you have been aware of this since that time, and I realized that was back in 21, but the audit didn't conclude for 21 until May of 22. As I remember, we, uh, Ms. Ms. Atmore, we uh, accepted your recommendation to go forward to do that with the understanding that we're gonna go ahead and reconcile the cash accounts. Now, to my recollection and in my 40 years of, of being in, in an accountant or CPA myself, I, uh, that's an that's a area, cash, liquid, that uh, you want to make sure you reconcile for internal control purposes. So even though the accounting system that was there did not um, do what you wanted to do, wouldn't it have been wise to go ahead and do it even r manually, whatever it would take to get those, uh, those balances there to reconcile that, that uh, area? We have been doing that, sir. We have been doing that. And if you realize the massive number of transactions that are running through the city each day um, and the turnover in staff, which I showed you in that plan of action, okay. the Ms. number Admiral, of turnover. Excuse me for, for cutting you off there. But if this just, you said you've been doing that, but what you just said to me a few minutes ago that you did not reconcile the cash balances. No, I did not say that. Okay. I said, you asked me a specific question about 20, 
three from that report. We're talking about two different things. You're talking about the, the financial report for February of 23, and you're asking me about cash. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about cash things. right now. I'm talking That's about cash. Okay, so let's talk about cash in where the Audit and Finance Committee last left off is we explained to them uh, regarding the cash reconciliation and the things that we had in implemented in order to get it reconciled. Um, th the other things that you guys do not recognize, and I was trying to portray that in the document, and I was hoping that you would read through it, is that Munis has chosen how it was set up, does not push a journal entry to the cash fund that I can reconcile directly to the bank. I know you think you could, would, because I have a separate fund to do that, and that's its purpose. But when our staff took a look at the entries coming out of the GL for the cash reconciliation to reconcile the bank, it doesn't happen the same. So guess what? I gotta do it manually. I gotta push it through manually. So we employed, we went out and got a consultant um, by the MindSphere uh, LLC that worked with other cities to help us with this because we thought maybe this anomaly with Munis, because I had not had this problem in another city that I used Munis with, that maybe we could get some expertise to, to reconcile it faster. And the issue is that they had, this, they had a, the same problem in asking us, why did we set this system up this way? And if you want to talk to them, we have their numbers. In fact, we've engaged three consultants. We have a consultant from the city of Fort Worth who is an expert in Munis. Ms. So Admiral. when I'm sharing with you that we are working on cash right now, we are, as far as 22 is concerned, we are about done. Ms. Okay, and we are generating, you're, you're, you're targeting cash Cash, I know from my years of experience, it's cash is king. That's when I came in here, I said cash is king when I came into this organization. But is it and when I saw the spreadsheets, when I saw the spreadsheets, I said this is not accurate. But it, but it has, but it's not had been reconciled. Well, try reconciling when you're coming from twelve months behind, twelve plus months behind, and I have over three hundred and 50 journal entries hitting the general ledger a month, in addition to all the AP invoices that I'm paying a month, in addition to all the other stuff that's hitting the bank statement a month that I have to get into the GL. The Bear in mind, we, there were only three of us for a while entering the data when staff turned over and they went separate ways and we recognized that they hadn't been, they had not entered the journal entries for deposits for almost three months. Mr. The Williams. other issue with Munis is that they did not give me, the former IT director did not give me access to review journal entries. I had, we hardly had any access. So with this new administration of, this new CIO is coming in, it has been a lot better. I have, I'm being able to see and post and review journal entries on a daily basis. And that is what we're doing. That is why we're able to keep up with the current year as well as the prior year working on the audit. Mr. Williams, can I address, would you address this for me please? Your previous tenure here, when you, uh, under the previous administration, did you see that the, the cash was reconciled? Cash was reconciled. The cash problem, again, is that word reconciliation. Um, I think after they left, the parties that were actually doing the reconciliation were working through and getting numbers, but they weren't reconciling. Reconciling, especially if you have to do it manually, you have to go in and look at each item and make sure that these transactions are supported by what goes through the system. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I looked at the GF, the J JE, and I've never seen something so much, there's not an accounting word for it other than jacked up is probably the right word to explain. <laughs> I, I keep it real, unfortunately, that's how I talk. <laughs> you know, so when you have a system that's making entries pushed out by the system, if you don't understand what's causing it, 
you're going around, and that's why we had three consultants go through and look at all the activity that's gone through. Because I think even in year one, when they implemented Munis, if there was not on a budgetary basis, you know, and sometimes there's a state, and you know, if you don't pay for what you get, what you pay for, I think it's an American stand to say with it, you know, and I think that's if you. I've gone through so many ERP transitions, and if you don't do it properly, if you don't look at all the hot buttons associated with it, problems occur. Let me make sure y'all understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Are you are you telling me that the previous administration did reconcile, and you gave your opinion? Previous administrators did reconcile. Yes. You it satisfied you. Yes. But so, the, the previous opinion, the previous period, they had an individual in there that knew what reconciliations were. So what happened, they disappeared. So you, poof, they're gone. And then all the activity continues going through. You have people in- So the, are you saying then that because that person left, no one was knowledgeable enough to go in and, com and continue that? The party that was doing the reconciliations was not knowledgeable enough. They didn't understand what reconciliation meant. They were just going through a, a rote process, in my opinion, of just kind of looking through. This, this is under the new time. administration, is that correct? Correct. So can I ask a follow-up question? Please. So this person that did all of these reconciliations left when? Um, in 2021. 21? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And Okay, so since then, we don't have anyone that can do that, and we've been unable to find a person that can do that? Um, rest assured, I know how to reconcile, based it, but when you coming from behind and find, have so many transactions and see the general ledger like we show it, um, I would invite you guys to come in and try I to would, reconcile. I would come. Come on. Take a look. Please do. I, I've had an expert that has been doing this for years with his system, and he's trying to create rules to make the GL and the bank match. Guess what? He's, his head is, is just spinning because he's saying, what did y'all do? What is Munis doing? And so one of the things that we have to do is work with Munis to figure out change the configuration on this system so that my journal entries come out right. And one of the things you know when you're going in as a finance director on, on bank reconciliations, the journal entries, you gotta, you gotta get the journal entries and strategically get them to m match the bank. If you can get that, your operation will be smooth and you'll get a smooth So what match. you're saying to us now is that the city of Duncanville does not have a reconciled bank account. Is that what you're telling me? Not to the GL. At up to this day, it is up to 22. We are wide open. This is this this is this is unacceptable. Well, it's unacceptable in any, unless you are willing to give the resources to get this caught up, like ASAP. Then you got what you got. And anybody else coming we, we, we're in not here. Gonna, we're not going to settle for not reconciling our bank accounts. We're not settling. We are not settling, sir. I'm sorry. That number of hours that this team works, they are not settling. Now, if you want to come in and see the hours we put in, they're not on your books, okay? But there are a number of hours that this staff has put in that I'm not going to sit here and tell, tell you that they are not putting in the time to reconcile. The issues that we have run into are part of it is computer. The Munis system is causing us significant issues. And because it was implemented in such a way, we are having a very difficult time reconciling it. If experts from the outside who are used to Munis come in and tell me that what did they do? So, so in Munis, and I've worked with Munis before, and what makes your reconciliation process Excuse possible. Excuse me, Mr. Williams. Yeah. With what she just said, and what I understand her to say, is your firm or the, the firm that you just left, 
will you be able to give us an audit? Mm -hmm. Not until cash is reconciled. So, so if the cash is not reconciled, we, we're just out there. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Right. So, so let me ask a follow-up question. So can you, can you provide us an approximate date? It doesn't have to be month, week, day, hour, minute, just approximately uh, when you think the audit will be finished. Mr. Chairman. Can sir. I make that prediction until Wait, hold on for you. Mr. Chairman. Sir. The last time we met, or the time before last we met, a, a time period was given us, a time frame was given to us. Mm -hmm. And that, that period is, is, is since passed. Agreed. Okay, Agreed. go ahead. Agreed. So, uh, back to my question. So, um, when do you think, when, when do you think that the audit will be finished this time around? Because the audit the last time around was finished according to the date of the May. letter, the representation letter was May the 10th of 2022. So, May, June? It boils to, to, I can't answer that question until anyone cash is reconciled. Um, that's, that's really. That's, that's a question for the finance director, sorry. <laughs> right now, I believe we are at, he has the reconciliation. We sent that to you. And that is, all of the accounts are reconciled, the operating, is up until, is that up until September? So we have, a, we, we have the reconciliation up to September that we were able to uh, complete with the uh, consultant's help. Uh, so cash is reconciled so that when I talked to Mr. Um, Williams, he said that he would be back in by the end of next week. And so, we have already reconciled three of the uh, accounts. This operating account is the biggest account, and that one is, uh, as she said, September is being reconciled right now. Now, what that means um, to you guys, because, I mean, you look at, in your head, it probably looks at, okay, it's reconciled all together as one. Um, we have multiple people putting entries into the bank which we recognize that we're gonna have to cease and desist, okay? Because without knowing where, who's, who's making the debits in the account and who's making the entries, we don't have control. But this was the operation of the prior administration and we decided we can no longer do that. So these are things along the operational ways that we've come in in order to reconcile that we're gonna have to change, and change in this organization is, is many times resisted. Um, uh, go, go ahead, ahead. Mr. Harvey. Go ahead. Um, City Manager Brown uh, acting is that this needs to obviously be some priority that needs to be given to this issue. And, and so uh, I'd like that to be part of the assignment that, that this is done and, and taken care of in a reasonable fashion. Uh, absolutely, sir. We recognize that this is a very important issue and we're committed to determining what those issues are and we're committed to correcting uh, those issues. <coughs> okay, so um, Everyone stay tuned, at some point we'll know when the 22 audit will be finished. Mr. Harvey, I have another question as oh, well. Mr. Excuse Talley. me, Mr. Talley. Go ahead. Okay, I yield. Um, my question is, when, yeah. when should they be done? Yes. Ah, I'm glad you asked. Yes, I was. Hang, hang on just a That's what I'm gonna say too, okay. I have something. It's almost time for the next audit to start. 
March 31st is the, is the deadline. It's six months after the end of your fiscal year. Um, yeah, nine months, I'm sorry, nine months, I'm sorry. Nine months after the end of your fiscal year. Time is flying for me. <laughs> um, but yes, so we are in that, in that time frame right now. This is March 31st is, is six months, so. Six, six months. months. Six months for the ACFR, nine, nine months for the single body. Yes. So, okay. you know, yeah. Sorry about that. Forgot about that. Right. And so because you guys are trying, you guys are being consistent on winning the award, that's always a six month process. So you, so they want to do timely in six months. Mm -hmm. that type of They've already um, approved uh, an extension, which you know that the GFOA award is just a policy document, approval of the policy that you have it in the state that they want it. Um, local government code, Title IV finances, subtitle A, municipal finances, chapter 103, audit of municipal finances, the section 103.003 filing public record, the annual financial statement, including the auditor's opinion on the statement, shall be filed in the office of the municipal secretary or clerk within 180 days after the last day of the municipality's fiscal year from the local government codes. And Mr. Chairman, what day is that? That would be March 31st. So we've all over already, okay. Second year in a row. And I've asked around, and I've been, uh, I've been told from reliable sources that never in the history of Duncanville has Duncanville been two consecutive years late. That's my understanding on its also. Audit. So. We've been on time for the last, as long as I've been uh, uh, a citizen here in Duncanville. And the last couple of years, we can't get it done. And so, you know, we've been talking about, at least we've been hearing concerns from the community. And I would say there are concerns, just not what you've been told. I have some Up concerns. until now. Not having an audit done on time is a definite concern. And two years in a row is the house is on fire. <laughs> and not having the banks reconciled uh, within 30 days after the close of the month is not something that well-run organizations do. I, I just want to say, uh, Ms. Ms. Atmore, the financial information that you gave us, it looks real pretty, a lot of numbers. But unless the, the cash is reconciled, we don't know if these numbers are correct or not. Is that true? I can tell you that the cash is in the bank, sir. I do the But until you reconcile to make sure everything is in the proper place, can you say that these numbers? Reconciliation is making sure that every, every receipt and every debit out of the account, every expense out of the account is accounted for in the general ledger. My question to you is, as of February 28, 2023, mm -hmm. the numbers that you gave us here in this report, if the cash is not reconciled through that date, you cannot say that these numbers are correct. Is that not true? I can say that those numbers are in your financial system from the documents, from the input. But if they're not, the if you can't even reconcile cash. The, money, the monies are hitting the bank, sir, and the expenditures. But if you're not reconciling out. cash, you if cannot I'm not say. I'm formally reconciling cash. You can't that say. That is an issue that we need to look at. It is a priority. We are taking that as a priority, and we are looking at the bank statement every day until we can get to the point where the system is able to match up the entries and I'll keep explaining this to you guys, is that the entries in the general ledger make it very difficult to the match the balances. And so we have been trying different things to get that amount to match so that we don't have to, I don't have five people to reconcile. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is, 
these numbers that you gave us in this report, if cash is not reconciled, we don't know what if these numbers are correct. I'm pretty confident in those numbers, sir. Well, you got pretty confident. You can't com numbers. be confident until you have re cash reconciled. I'm pretty confident. There are going to be debits sir. and credits that come through there that we don't know I if they're in the right. I am pretty confident that the, in those numbers, sir. Based, based on my experience. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me go, let me start you for a minute. Go ahead. As a certified public accountant, you are, I am, Mr. Mullen is also. We know that we have to reconcile cash to make sure all the transactions are properly coded and put into the account to, for each account. Now that's basic fundamental. So let me share with you, and I'm gonna just do this as kindly as I can, but if your prior administration and what we're finding and what we're having to do daily is that the, the expenditures were not coded correctly they were not matched correctly. They were not, the accounts that we find stuff in, we're having to make journal entries to adjust them. They don't belong there. So what you are saying sounds good, but in reality, what we're experiencing in our day-to-day -day interaction with the bank and the GL and your department, the users that are actually depositing money into the account is that where things got deposited and I'm going to say and I know we're not talking about the previous yes, administration. Right, we're, we're talking about this administration. No, he did yes, bring up the previous. Ago. He said that. Yes, he what, did. But I know ago. that they reconciled and they did their audit on time. Two, two and the auditors ago. gave a fair, uh, clean opinion. Well, I know a lot of cities have gotten the same thing, have been delayed in their audit, and they've gotten a clean opinion, just as we did last year. So that theory just doesn't hold. And I've been in cities, and I can tell you some, some other people on this council have been in the same cities where the audits were late and we got a clean opinion. Okay. I've been in some cities where they have not reconciled in a few months. In fact, I came from a city where I came into and the books when I came in there were manually reconciled and it's taken three months to reconcile one month. Mr. Williams, does that make sense to you? possible and it can't but wait, are you saying that you can give them an opinion without the, the not without the it. so you have materiality so last year cash wasn't fully reconciled and we said that in our report but we had it to within a material number that met the size of the materiality but as an organization it's important and it's imperative that cash gets reconciled thank you right because materiality is one thing are the financials materially properly stating Yes. Is it going to affect the individual decision based off of where they were at the end of last year? That's since the, the, the correct. Same sort of situation probably with the report. But from an organizational standpoint, you want to make sure that ca cash is to the penny. And the issue is to get it to the penny based off of what's going on. We're talking about That's internal control here. We, we want to make sure that things are right. Bingo. Mr. Chairman, that was uh, A and B, I think. Uh, yes. I know that there's a uh, um, uh, candidate's forum. You get a candidate on your board. Um, I don't know if you want to continue this C and D to another meeting. Uh, so what the attorney said is true. So. Um, we do have uh, Mr. Coons, who uh, is due for a form, so uh, I, uh, I would recommend that we continue this for another meeting. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I understand you, 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 you're messing with me, Patrick, <laughs> hold on. What can, what can we conclude with this? What can we what can we say? We got to come up with some kind of conclusion, don't we? To come on, say it again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm kind of new at this. You you keep indicating the huh? Libic Lotto. Go ahead. 
you keep in, uh, indicating that the prior administration, it was a problem. What uh, are we talking about? I'm new on this. Are we talking about like uh, six months, a year? What? How, how much time are we talking about has elapsed since you came on board? I came in June of 21 as an interim. June of 21? June of 21. Thank you. And in that June of 21, the audit was just about complete. So uh, 22 is really the audit um, that is completely mine. Um, what happened in the prior administration is we ran into in the end of the audit is that we implemented a system. We ran into the reconciliation that was done manually and it was off. So we were trying to figure out why is it off? And that was the manual one that was done by uh, prior staff. Even though it was a manual one, the auditors reviewed it and they gave the opinion that it was fairly stated. Is that not true? They said it was materially, materially fairly stated. Materialism, okay, yeah. materialism. And, and but still, though, you, you it gave was, it. It wasn't fairly, it wasn't, that, that was why the audit took so long last year. That was wait, what wait, caused wait, the delay. What are you saying, Marlon? Are you saying that you changed your mind? No, it didn't change my mind. The audit last year, and we said from day one, and I think it was found numerous times we had communications that cash wasn't reconciled, right? But, but you, you were satisfied enough. We got it materially stated correctly, yes. We're satisfied, but again, am, would I be satisfied if I was a finance director? No. Am I satisfied as an auditor? Yes, because it comes within the material threshold of being materially correct. Now this was the 21 audit? Yes. Had that's been done? Correct, yeah, 21's done. Has been done. Yes. I, I, th I think the focus, again, for the audit to get completed, right, is to get cash reconciled on a timely basis from, from this point forward. My our, our process right now is we're going to go through all the other accounts. The problem is until cash gets reconciled, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a no win situation. Because I know you guys want a date. I I don't feel comfortable making that date until I see where the cash is. Because then we can back date from that point. Because if, if there's a lot of items that have been cleared up, we've got to go back and test it. We got to make sure that we're comfortable with it. Because again, it's an area now of, of extreme risk. Okay, so Miss Admore just told us a few minutes ago she. I guess you talked to one of the assistants or something that it's been reconciled through September. Is that true? Am I, is that right or not? It's been reconciled through September. Yes. Um, and as he said, as a finance director, we're not satisfied with just the materiality. I am looking for everything uh, to match. And so the other process that we're looking at, if you just want to hear, if you want to hear this, is basically we're looking at a process that we can reconcile within two hours of pulling down the GL. And so working with this consultant is giving us the wherewithal to do that because he's creating rules. We're, we're structuring the journal entry so that they can match automatically going through the journal entry. So that's part of the process is taking place now because from I can see in my experience, trying to reconcile a GL that's coming out of units like it is, it's gonna be difficult for any staff this size to stay, to, to be sustainable. And so if you want to try, Mr. Tally, I would, I would welcome you to come in and look at that so that you can give us, maybe you can give us uh, some of your expertise and how we could reconcile that even faster. Let me ask you this. Do you have adequate staff right now to do the work? Of course not. I do not have adequate staff. I do have staff that we're working within the city's budget in order to get stuff done. That is why I have hired consultants to come in because hiring staff right now is, it's, you have to take the time to hire and find the right person to come in and do it. I was fortunate to pick up Ms. Hickman to come in and assist me because the prior assistance that I had was somebody who did not know how to reconcile but told me they did. And so when I reviewed the document and said, this is not reconciliation, what are you doing? So that was a retraining process having to go on. So I'm training and try to run the operation. It is difficult at best. But we are committed to getting it done because I don't, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. 
that cash is king. It has to be reconciled, and I'm not satisfied with materiality. I, am, I want to make sure that everything is reconciled and accounted for on the general ledger. How many is on your staff? You're talking about numbers. How many people? Five. Five or less? Five. Five, including you. Including me. Okay. okay. And I am doing the detailed work at this point. I am down in the numbers. We make journal entries. We approve. We have to do a control. Having dual controls is difficult because there's only so many of us as we train new staff that just came in. And in that report I gave you, I showed you the turnover, the, the expertise and experience I have on staff is minimal, but they're learning. And we are committed to training them. However, you know that it takes time. It is not going to happen overnight. So, Mr. Um, Mr. Coons has a question. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. So. Uh, <coughs> To be honest, I'm having deja vu, and you know, I'm hearing a lot of things that we have heard uh, in a couple of times. I know I've heard on multiple occasions that mm -hmm. we have staff shortages, mm -hmm. and that some of the staff that were in place were, maybe were not qualified to do what the jobs that they were asked to do. And I've also, um, you know, this I think this is my third or fourth audit committee meeting, and yes, we have discussed on multiple occasions the insufficiencies of the unit system. My understanding from the very beginning was that uh, we paid for a, a base level system without all the bells and whistles, and, and like you said, we're getting what we're paying for. So I'm hearing lots of things that, I, that I've heard before, um, and, and yes, there was a candidate's forum that started half an hour ago, um, but I'm not hearing anything where we're coming to any kind of conclusion with this discussion, and a lot of what we're discussing I feel like might be uh, something that should be discussed by the council and maybe not by this commission. So uh, if, if, you know, I'm, I'm about to leave. If you feel like there's some actionable item that's going to be taken uh, this evening, I will certainly stay. Um, but looking at what's left on the agenda, uh, this is going to come to council sooner or later anyways. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Councilor? Uh, there was, you had two agenda items. One. Uh, a and B, which you addressed, and so uh, I think it would be appropriate if we made a motion that we need to, assuming we have a balanced, uh, that's why I'm a lawyer, not an accountant, uh, there's been a reconciliation to the end of the year, 2022, and that needs to get over to Mr. Williams so that he can do his work. We don't have a date, but uh, at this point, someone might need to give the council a date and say, I think the only thing you can do is, we don't have a date, Mr. Talley, uh, that we can give the council and we need to let him know that. That's why you meet, because one of your primary functions under the ordinance is, is to review the audit and ask questions and like you have been doing tonight so that uh, when that document is done, you, you, you feel as the recommending body comfortable that things are as they're presented. Okay. So and at this point, I don't know that you are all comfortable at this point. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think we're all comfortable at this point. So I say, um, what we have learned so far, at least what I've learned so far, is that uh, there was a uh, problem with a budget document which uh, was resolved, uh, was recommended to be resolved by gradient and it was done. Um, the audit uh, is still in process, and we'll just let the council know that um, we don't have a date yet, and to ask them to urge uh, speedy completion of the budget. That's where we are. I can give an approximation since you need a date to go through them. I would say if cash is reconciled, it's about 300 man hours to complete the audit from that point forward. Okay. So, you know, um, we'll put resources because we want to, I'd love to get it 
I'd like to get a lot of those man hours done before the 12th of May. So, so that basically we'll have at least, what my thought process basically is, I'm gonna start preparing the draft on the numbers that we already have, because it's linked up, and then we'll wait to see what happens as a byproduct, because I think they sent another trial balance today, I think I got an email from yesterday. yesterday. This, yeah, so that, that's the one I'm gonna use from a planning standpoint. I can take a look at that, probably it'll be over the weekend or Monday, and then after looking at that, I'm gonna go back with them with some questions and hopefully we can kind of start moving because the, the girl who's gonna start working on it, she's gonna come out here, you know, and I'm just saying we're just gonna sit down here and get it done because I'm trying to get everything off my plate and just focus on getting this as far along the process so that if Chuck, who's gonna be the partner, is gonna sign off of it, it's in a decent result. All right, you know? so so let's, let's reconvene uh, in a month and we can get an update. We can meet the new partner from the firm that'll be handling the audit, and um, we'll go from there. If you want, uh, Mr. Chairman, maybe it'd be appropriate to make a motion yep. that basically your restated conclusions that, that you just made, that we put those in some form and come from the committee as what you did here today, and of course the record will speak for itself because the meeting's being recorded, but at least have those findings uh, come out of the committee that the audit's not done, that the cash has recently been reconciled and there are approximately 300 man hours. I think it would be instructive that they know something. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's council members here and they'll all watch the video, and, uh, but something that concrete come out of the committee because that that's why you meet and that's what your job is to make recommendations to them. Okay. So so can you do that Mr. Macklin and make a motion? Uh, I'll try to state it for you that uh, that the audit committee moves to uh, follow the conclusions as stated by Mr. Harvey at the conclusion of the meeting uh, regarding the uh, Granicus uh, solution to the uh, water fund issue, which has been euphemistically referred to as two sets of books, and that uh, the cash has been reconciled uh, for the close of the 2022 um, fiscal year on September 30th, and that that would allow the audit to proceed I think Mr. Williams uh, has identified for you that it's approximately 300 man hours and that uh, they'll do their level best to try to complete that by the 15th of May, as I understood him to say. I'll take the same day. As much as he can by the, I'll, we'll state it correctly because I don't want to write a check for someone <laughs> and I can't cash, so. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I, I do know, that's the only accounting I yeah, know, by the <laughs> way, so. Uh, and then we'll make that, uh, quote, a recommendation from the committee. And I'll uh, assist you in trying to write just what I said. Okay, you know? thank you, City Attorney. With that said, I'll say so moved. Second. All right, uh, moved by uh, Member McBurnett and seconded by uh, Member Talley. And so let's, uh, since we don't have the lights, we'll just raise our hands. All in favor of the motion raised. Okay, passes unanimously. And so with that, we are done. Uh, time adjourned. 704. 704, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Atmore.